وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We started a series where we spoke about the lost legacy of scholars or female scholars of Islam and inshallah ta'ala in today's episode I want to speak about the third point inshallah ta'ala that the women are the same with men or they are equal with men when it comes to the concept of fi tahqiq al-masail al-ilmiya bil munadharati wal muhawara women are the same and they are equal to men when it comes to fi tahqiq al-masail when it comes to reaching the bottom of what is right from what is wrong in knowledge yani tahqiq al-masail meaning to reach the correct position and the correct view as much as men should do that women should also do the same and also women are the same when it comes to the means that has to be taken in order to do that for example al munadhara discussion and dialogue wal muhawara having a dialogue and a discussion men and women can have that when it comes to masail al ilmiya some of us have this belief that a woman should be quiet and sit at the back and not ask no questions and she shouldn't interject and she can't يعني, question and she can't have a dialogue and even have a debate. We think that is, يعني, it goes against the concept of shyness and that is wrong. It is wrong. Women are entitled to, rather they should engage, discuss and this is clear when you look at the Islamic, Islamic literature. Let me give you some examples, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, it was narrated from Umul Fadl bint al Harith. And the hadith you can find in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim. And the Nas and Tamara were in Daha. A group of people debated and argued next to her, around her. Yawm Arafah, the day of Arafah. Fi Siyam ya Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was fasting. The debate was about. Is the Messenger Ali Salatu Salam fasting or not? Fakala Ba'duhum, some of them they said, who was Sa'im when the Prophet's fasting. Wakala Ba'duhum, and some of them they said, Laysa bi Sa'im, the Prophet's not fasting. Fa arsal tu ilayhi bi qadhin. Umu Fadl bint al Harith, she said, I sent to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a cup, in it was milk. Wa waqifun ala ba'irihi bi arafa, and the Prophet was, he was standing. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi in Arafah with his riding beast. He was there, Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. And the milk was given to him. Fasharibahu, the Prophet drank the milk, alayhi salatu wa salam. The hadith is found in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Now ponder here, there was a debate and a discussion happening around her. Men and women were discussing this issue. Is the Prophet fasting or not? As we know, as we're well aware, that Fasting on the day of Arafah is for the people who are not in Hajj. Okay? The people who are not in Hajj, they fast on the day of Arafah. Like in the people who are in Hajj, they don't fast. And so Ummul Fadl bint al Harith, she said it was a discussion. Everybody was asking, is the Prophet fasting or is he not fasting? So it didn't stop the companions discussing amongst themselves. The women were discussing it, the men were discussing it fairly. And this shows that the women and men, they are the same and the women share with the men في تحقيق المسائل العلمية بالمناظرة والمحاورة حافظ بن حجر he explained that hadith and he took a fiqh from it he said ومن فوائد الحديث the benefits in this hadith is المناظرة في العلم بين الرجال والنساء he said this hadith 
the benefits that are in it is al munadhara debate dialogue discussion fil ilmi in knowledge bayna al rijal wal nisa between men and women ibn hajar said this so this cultural belief that we have we've been raised to believe that the men are the only ones who yani discuss with the teacher the men are the only ones who can ask questions and the women have to sit at the back close their mouth uh, can't ask questions they need to be silent this is a mistaken belief this is a mistaken belief women are encouraged to come forward when it comes to seeking knowledge they are encouraged to engage in what is being taught and it's, they are also encouraged to put forward their contentions when it comes to knowledge and this is definitely present in our religion and that's how our religion looks at it another example some of you still might not be convinced another example some of you might think that that was a yani a rare situation that was a, uh, a secluded situation one off i want to show you that's not really the case abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said لعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الواشمات والمستوشمات والمتنمصات والمتفلجات للحسن المغيرات لخلق الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم cursed he said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the women who placed tattoo on themselves and the ones who asked for who asked tattoo be, to be done for them and the ones who do tattooing the ones who do the tattoo ta to do the tattooing they're cursed the ones who ask for the tattooing to be done are also cursed the prophet said also who are cursed wal mutalammisat the women who pluck the, their eyebrows they shape their hair on their eyebrows the prophet cursed them alayhi salatu wasalam wal mutafallijat lil husni the women who shape their teeth and back then it was beauty to have space between your two front teeth والمتفلجات للحسن the reason why she's doing this is because of beauty المغيرات لخلق الله changing the way Allah created سبحانه وتعالى now this hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is saying that the Prophet said these people are cursed لعن means الطرد من رحمة الله the mercy of Allah is distance from these people and he mentioned three in his hadith. The first ones are those who do tattooing and those who tattooing who ask for tattooing to be done for them. The women's the women who pluck their eyebrows are also cursed. And the third ones are those who change the way Allah created them. And the Prophet gave an example here, which is those who shape their teeth. So it, this is just an example, but if anything, yani that the person is changing the way Allah created them, it falls under this. Because of the, the illa is jami'ah, the illa covers both. Anyways, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he said that, فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ مَرَأَةً مِنْ بَنِي أَسَدٍ يُقَالُ لَهَا أُمُّ يَعْقُوبُ A woman by the name of Ummu Ya'qub, she heard of what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he said that, رضي الله تعالى statement, she heard about it. فَجَاءَتْ إِلَيْهِ She came to him. She heard that he said this. She came and she went, she came forward. فَقَالَتْ She said, بَلَغَنِي It reached me, anka from you. أَنَّكَ قُلْتَ كَيْتَ وَكَيْتَ It has reached me that you said this, 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 this. Again, the permissibility of a woman coming up and questioning a scholar, questioning a teacher. Islamically is permissible. A man shouldn't say, who are you? You're a woman, how are you talking to me? Many people believe that. They have this illness in their hearts and their minds. Get rid of that. She can question you. She can ask you questions. Um, so she said to Umu Yaqub and she said, uh, it reached me, أَنَّكَ قُلْتَ كَيْتَ وَكَيْتَ You said, this is this. قَالَ He said, وَمَا لِلَّا أَلْعَنُ مَنْ لَعَنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, why should I not curse? 
those in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed. And then he went step forward and he, then he said, وَهُوْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And it's also in the book of Allah. Now pay attention here. He didn't just say the Prophet cursed these people. First he said, why should I not curse these people? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not curse them. He didn't stop there. He said, وَهُوْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ It's in the book of Allah. Now she said, قَالَتْ إِنِّي لَأَقْرَأُ مَا بَيْنَ لَوْحَيْهِ فَمَا وَجَدْتُهُ This Qur'an, I have read it cover to cover. She was a person of knowledge. She had read the whole entire Qur'an. And she's an Arab who knows the language, understands the Qur'an. So she said, I have read the Qur'an, Ya Ibn Mas'ud. I read the entire Qur'an. And what you are saying, I don't find that in the Qur'an. It's not in the Qur'an. Debate, discussion, dialogue taking place right now. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, look how he responded. He said to her, قَالَ إِن كُنْتِ قَرَأْتِهِ If you've read the Qur'an, فَقَدْ وَجَدْتِهِ You found it. If we, what you did is you looked at the Qur'an, you read the Qur'an, then you found it. He then said to her, أَمَا قَرَأْتِ Have you not recited the ayah? وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنُهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet gives you, take from him. And whatever he prohibits from you, stay away from. Qalat bala. She said, of course I've read that verse. Qala he said, فَإِنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم قَدْ نَهَا عَنْهُ The Prophet is the one that's prohibiting this. It is the Messenger who prohibited from the women doing this. Placing tattoo on themselves. Or asking for tattoo to be done on them. Or plucking their eyebrows. Or changing the way Allah created them. It's the Prophet who prohibited this. And if the Prophet prohibited it, we were commanded in the Quran to follow the Prophet والسلام, in what he prohibited us from it. So, in other words, it's mentioned in the Quran, he said. Qalat, she said, She said, I don't think your family follow this command, this prohibition. Allahu Akbar. She said, قالت, I don't think your family, Ibn Mas'ud, follow this prohibition. I think they do either tattooing or they do the, uh, uh, the plucking of the eyebrows or they change the, the way Allah created them. Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud, he said, Idhabi, Fanduri, go and look. So that happened, the woman went. He said, go into my family's house. Look at my wives and my daughters. Check them out. See for yourself. فَذَهَبَتْ she went. Another benefit that we take from here is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud knew his family. He was connected with his family. He was aware of what was taking place in his household. He was connected to his daughters. And he was connected with his wife. And he was connected with his family and his household. That's very important. A father should be connected with his daughters and know their situation and be there for them. He should also be connected to his sons and be there for them. And he should also be aware of the situation of his spouse, his partner, her situation. Is her iman going down? Is her iman up? And the list goes on. So she went. She went and she looked. She looked at the wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the daughters of ibn Mas'ud, the, house, the women in the house. She checked all of them. فَنَظَرَتْ فَلَمْ تَرَى مِنْ حَاجَتِهَا شَيْئًا She couldn't find anything. قَالَتْ She said, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا I never saw anything. Another thing that we benefit from the hadith is that some people, they have these characteristics. They bring a contention. They bring an issue to the table. But when the answer is, is given to them, they don't have the audacity, they don't have the courage, they don't have the decency of saying, you've convinced me. Or, you were right, I was wrong. Or, I came to the conclusion of this issue. They don't have that in them. She could have just walked away and left, but she never, because she brought a point. She said, I don't think your family follow this prohibition, Yabla Mas'ud. So when she went and she checked, 
And she came out, she can't just leave. She has to tell Ibn Mas'ud, I didn't see anything. That's the respect and the dignity that majority of us, we lack. قالت ما رأيت شيئا. I haven't seen anything, she said. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said something very powerful. Once she informed him and she told him ما رأيت شيئا. I haven't seen anything in your household. يعني I haven't seen anything to point at. I haven't seen anything I could, I could say here. I couldn't see anything. Perfection. Perfect. An upright, good household you have. None of them have fallen into this prohibition. That's what she said. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said something that should touch each and every one of our hearts. Something that should make us as people work towards and be like. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, لو كانت كما تقولين If these women that were in the household that I had, my wife, my children, etc. If they were going against the prohibition of the Prophet Sallallahu and they were disobedient to Allah's Messenger by plucking their eyebrows or yani, changing the way Allah created them or placing on themselves tattoos and etc. If that was present in the ho- my household, ma jama'atna, there would be no roof that would bring us under. There would be no roof in which we would all share. Yani, we wouldn't, they would not stay in my presence and I wouldn't stay in their presence. We would not stay together. Either you leave or I leave. خلاص. And that's something very, very powerful. Munkar and evil, you should try to change it in your household. A man, his wife is out there and he acting in this way and he by dressing in this particular way and being this way and he's happy and he's laughing about it. She's changing the way Allah created. She's placing tattoo on herself. He laughs. Where she's uh, changing the way her teeth is, she's laughing. And the opposite is true. There's a sister, her husband's placing tattoo on himself. He's changing the way Allah created him. And she's laughing and she's happy about it. How could you stay with somebody like that? A sister shouldn't. Shouldn't stay with an individual who's corrupt like that. Try to change the person. Tell them, rectify your situation. Your situation is very serious. It needs help. You're يعني, in a state of problem. If the person is adamant and isn't changing and is still consistent upon this crime and this sin then follow the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud which is radiyallahu ta'ala anhu law kanat kama taqulina ma jama'atna if, the, if you're upon corruption and you're upon crimes and sinning we can't share the same roof we can't share the same roof my household has to be in a it has to be a household where righteous people come together. Noble people come together. Ahlul Khair wal Fadl, they come together. But the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu salam, he said, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا Do not befriend except a believer. ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي And do not let your food be eaten except by a pious person. In other words, be with a person who's righteous. That should be the person you're always with. Not your wife, is a person who's right, who's your friend, sorry. Your wife is your closest friend that you have. Make sure she's a righteous individual. And don't let anyone eat your food. Or don't provide and fund someone who's committing crimes and going against Allah's commands and disobeying Allah wa ta'ala layl and wanahara, day and night. Another thing that we benefit from the, the dialogue that took place between the companion Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and the female companion Umu Ya'qub, the benefit that we take from both of their discussion is that whenever Allah and His Messenger was mentioned, it was what held them both back. And the knowledge that they were both looking for is the Quran and the Sunnah. Umu Ya'qub, she didn't say, oh, well, that's your opinion, leave me alone. That you can see the way that the debate was going and the discussion was going. And the discussion was Allah and His Messenger. And he, he told her the Prophet said, she went quiet. And then he added on, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that it's also in the Quran. She said, but I read the Quran and it's not there. I haven't seen it. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud came back and he told her, it's in the ayah, And he told her how he got it from that verse. And she said, okay. Again, 
very submiss- submissive to the text, the Quran and the Sunnah. And the poet Ibn al Qayyim, he said, Al ilm qala Allahu, qala Rasuluhu, qala as Sahabatuhum, ulul Urfani, bal ilmu nas buka lil khilafi safahatan, bayna al Rasuli wa bayna ra'i fulani. Knowledge is Allah said and the Messenger said. That's what knowledge is. Al ilmu qala Allahu, qala Rasuluhu. Knowledge is Allah said and the Messenger said. And then qala as Sahabatu, the companions, they said. Hum ulul Urfani, the Sahabas are the people of knowledge, the people of understanding, the Sahabas. ما العلم نصبك للخلاف سفاهة بين الرسول وبين رأي فلان. Knowledge isn't brothers. This is a sad reality for many people. They think knowledge is. فلان said so and so said so and so said this. فلان said this. They think that's pure knowledge. No. يعني gathering the statements of an Imam Malik and the view that Malik held and Shafi'i held and Ahmed held and Abu Hanifa held and knowing which view which. Who held that view? By itself is not knowledge. And in gathering all the views out there and saying, this is the view of Abu Hanifa, and this is a view of Al Imam Ahmad Riwayat al Anhu, and this is also Qawlu al Qadim al Shafi'i, and the Qawlu al Jadid is this view, and Al Imam Malik Rahimahullah Ta'ala, this is what he said. And this by itself is not knowledge. It's not it. ولذلك الشيخ ناصر رحمه الله تعالى شيخ الألباني رحمه الله used to say and it's a very powerful statement of his he says the person who gathers all of the views of the scholars and mentions them and does not strengthen one view over the other is like a person who brings all of the chains of the hadith together and does not place a ruling on which one is authentic and which one isn't what benefit does it hold mentioning all of the different chains if you're not finally going to give the grading of the hadith to the people. Because the people just need to know what is sahih from what is da'if. That's the ultimate goal, right? These views, what we need from it is what is right and what is wrong. What is sahih and what is not. And the only thing that can determine what is right and what is wrong is not one view over another. It's which of those views is in line with the evidence. Which of those views is supported by the evidence. That's the one that can be said is right. Or else it's going to be tahakum. It's going to be a mere claim to say this imam said this and this imam said this and this imam is, يعني, his view is right, uh, stronger than this imam's view. That's not. Because all these a'imma rahimahumullah are of the same caliber. They're of the same level. Rahimahumullah. We strengthen their views based on the text, whose view is supported by the evidences. And sometimes it's not about which one is in line with the evidence, but it's which one is the closest to the evidence. They're all far, they're all not, the evidence is not clear in this issue for them, but we look at who's the closest to the evidence and we take that view. If the mas'ala is a mas'ala ijtihadiya. I'm going to stop there inshaAllah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.